Do you have anything you want to say before questions? Um, only that we just, well, probably 45 minutes ago finished uh, talking to every single guy. Uh, was um, very good, very informative. Um, players listened, we listened, and, uh, you know, and overall had a, had a very good day of, of wrapping things up. So um, we can get into questions. All right. Max? Well, thank you. Um, I got two, if that's possible. Um, I would like to ask about Marcy Kleber first. Um, how you assess his season and what do you want him to improve on over the summer? Yeah, his season, he had a, <clears throat> he had a good season. The only, the only thing that pre prevented him from having a great season were, were COVID and injury issues. Um, you know, COVID struck early. Um, he happened to have a very serious case, so his recovery took longer. Um, and then once he got into the season, he just kept having these nagging little injuries that would happen at these odd times. There was one time in the game right after we came out of the eight-day break, uh, we're playing Memphis, and the whistle blew on a play in the second half, and half a second later, he turned around, put his foot down, stepped on somebody's foot, turned his ankle a little bit. So he starts, you know, it's just nuisance stuff like that. And then it was... You know, it bothered him. It wasn't enough to keep him from playing, but it was enough to affect his ability to explode, move laterally, you know. And it's just, there was just a string of these things. Um, takes a charge in the Detroit game from Domboya. Um, you know, the next night, or two nights later, later maybe in the second Laker game, you know, he, he, he fell on his back in the Detroit game, and then you know, Anthony Davis <clears throat> fakes and goes up for a three, jumps into him, and he lands in exactly the same spot, you know, two days later. Um, and then that thing flared back up. It was just a one thing after another. Um, he's one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. Um, and he's put in an amazing amount of work to get to that point, which is, which is great. And, uh, and talking to him today, it was, hey, you know, do it. Do what you need to do to get yourself healthy, uh, rehabbed, uh, get your body, you know, um, fresh again. Um, coming off of the bubble and last season when he played the most games in the league at 67, um, and then we had a short off season. Then we were right back into it, and then all this other stuff happened. So he's had a very, very busy year, but he's a terrific player and um, and, and a very unique player. Callie. Hey, Greg, thanks for your time. Um, I'm curious, what are your thoughts about having five or six players who are going to be having a quick turnaround for the Olympic qualifiers and, and potentially playing in Tokyo, and specifically as it pertains to Luca, you know, how do you balance kind of maybe wanting him to have a break and, and rest everything that was nagging him this season versus this being an opportunity for him to maybe um, you know, keep playing and staying in shape during the offseason? Yeah, we spoke to him about that today, and uh, we're, <clears throat> we're helping him set up a schedule so that he can get um, a bit of rest before entering the uh, training camp in, in Slovenia with the Slovenian national team. Um, you know, we're going to have some people over there with him. Uh, I'm going to go over for a few days uh, during training camp. Donnie Nelson's going to be over there. Casey Smith is going to be over there, um, you know, to support him and, uh, and, and to watch what they do with the, with the Slovenian national team. I'm, I'm going to be very interested to, to see that, but uh, you know, Luke has got a, a very good feel for um, his own body, even at the young age of 22. Um, he's been through a lot of games, and 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 what's not a very short career, really, if you go back to him turning pro at age 13. And he'll feel his way through this, and uh, and I and, and and I think in the you know in the end, this this will end up being a positive thing. He. He's always had great experiences with their national team, and um, you know I, I'm I'm confident that this will be another one. Tim McMahon. Rick, what do you think the next steps are for Luca in terms of his development? Well, you know, in talking to him today, um, you know, we we talked about uh, what it's going to take to win in the playoffs, and 
he's taken on such a huge responsibility, um, you know, and, and has had to be so ball dominant that, you know, we both agreed that, you know, trying to strike a balance where there isn't so much on his shoulders is, is an important thing. Um, you know, we've got to get healthy. Um, you know, Maxi Kleber not being, you know, even at 90 percent was was a big factor. Um, we got to do anything possible to upgrade the roster. Um, and, you know, we're always looking for good defensive players. You know, I think that's an area where we continue um, to look at ways to improve. And, uh, you know, and, and that's that's kind of that's kind of where I see it. I you know, I think <clears throat> I think this off season is going to provide an opportunity for him to prepare the way he wants to prepare for an NBA season. Um, last year was you know a one off. Um, there was a period where people didn't know when the season was going to begin. Um, he believed it was going to begin in mid-January, which was the original rumor, and then, then all of a sudden it started six weeks earlier. And he didn't have the, the, the ability to, to prep the way he wanted to. So <clears throat> I think having that kind of momentum going into training camp um, is another way that, that he's going to continue to elevate his game. Tim Cato. As, hey, Rick, as you talk about lessening the load on, on Luca and, uh, you know, helping, helping him out there and bringing talent into the roster, what type of player, what archetype of player um, would be needed to, to do that and to help lessen the load on him? Well, you know, big challenges. Uh, I, I heard Adam Silver say one time, big challenges are solved in small steps. And... You know, we've got to take care of, um, you know, getting our guys healthy, which I mentioned. You know, we got Tim Hardaway, who's a free agent. And I think Donnie probably said that, you know, getting him signed is, is, a, is a priority. Um, you know, guys that, that compliment Luca would be uh, rugged defenders. You know, it'd be great to find a, a rugged <clears throat> defender who, um, who was a dead-eye shooter and could, could, could make – you know, make some simple plays. Um, and look, our eyes are always open. And we have some young guys that are developing too. And so um, I think those are all realistic avenues. Um, you know, as we get into free agency and, and everything, I, you know, we're going to have some cap space. Um, so there will be some opportunities to, to do some things with the roster. Uh, but some of that's going to be a wait and see. Um, but uh, I know that uh, I know that he's excited to get a little bit of rest here. Um, I know that he's enthusiastic about playing with the national team, and then you know being able to have a, a, a quote unquote conventional summer of being able to prepare for training camp. Uh, we have three more Valencia. Hey, Rick, thank you for your time. When you look at your rookies entering into their first professional offseason, I'm sure you've spoken with them about what you want them to work on individually, but overall, what are some of the things you've told them about how they can make the most of their offseason? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, one of the things that um, Michael Finley said. So in these exit interviews, it was myself, Donnie Nelson, and Michael Finley. Uh, he, one thing that he said to the all the young guys, um, and there's four of them that are rookies. <clears throat> he goes, now that you guys are NBA players, <laughs> you know, you're going to have a lot of new friends, you know, a lot of people that know who you are and stuff like that. You know, make, make sure that you, you don't allow that to become a distraction. And if you feel like you worked hard this year, um, work twice as hard this summer because the summer is when – players in the NBA make their greatest gains. And so, um, you know, I know that uh, Tyrell and, and Josh Green and uh, Nate and, and Tyler Bay, uh, these guys are all enthusiastic uh, competitors. They're great workers. Um, and I know they're very much looking forward to it. And because uh, 
NBA rules allow us to um, half play, have, have our first and second year guys in for um, a, co a couple of 10 day to two week periods to work uh, on our dime. So we will do that. Um, I don't have the exact dates, but, um, but those guys will have the benefit of that. There will be body work, there will be functional training, strength training, functional strength training, there will be on court basketball work. Um, and to my knowledge, there is a summer league in Vegas this summer. So uh, it'll be a five game league. And, you know, um, if everything goes well, uh, as planned, these guys, these uh, four guys will be, will be playing together and have an opportunity to, to compete for the Mavericks um, in, the, uh, in the Vegas Summer League. So that'll be, a, that'll be a great experience as well. Skyler? Rick, after the trade for KP, there was a lot of anticipation about the pairing of him and Luca. Where do you see that now? Do you still have really high hopes for those two as a tandem and, and what needs to happen to sort of fulfill those hopes? Well, number one, KP's health is the, is the biggest thing. And as I said yesterday, I, I really felt as this series ended that his legs were as strong as we'd seen them. Um, his movement patterns were as positive as we'd seen them. His defense uh, in those three games was um, the best that we'd seen. And, you know, what we're getting into um, in, the evol in the evolution of today's NBA, we're getting into, you know, a, a different um, style of defense. It's not like you can just put your seven foot three guy on the five man and play drop coverage and let him protect the rim. You know, now, now teams are putting, you know, five skill players out there that can stretch the floor. And, you know, in the first few games, they, they were um, bringing, bringing his guy up and, and lining him up and, 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 and trying to attack him downhill. Um, he adjusted well as the series went on. And, and as, I, as I mentioned, in the last three games, um, did a did a really solid job with it, and so I think he's realizing that you know the job description um, defensively is is changing, and uh, you know he acknowledged that in our meeting. I don't know if he talked to you guys about that or any of the, any of the other things that we spoke about, but um, that's another reality. Uh, he's a very unique player, and you know. Uh, I just think that there are, there are so many things that he can do at 7-3 that, that you know, very few guys in the history of the game that I've ever seen can do. we got to keep studying our offense um, and ways to bring more of those positive things out. But truthfully, you know, the defensive end um, is a big key. And, and, and really, the other, the other part of this if you look at stretches of games, uh, parts of last season and this season, when Luke and KP had played together and had a chance to get a rhythm over a period of time, they've always cycled up um, in a very positive way. And so, you know, as we enter the summer and, you know, look forward to a productive summer for all our guys and, you know, training camp, which will be here before we know it, um, you know, a fresh start, good health, um, are very important things. Okay, um, and then the last one is, we're gonna go back to Max. He has a question about Dirk, so it won't be related to this season, but we'll go ahead and let him ask that. Yeah, th thanks for the second opportunity. Um, looking back at the championship uh, 10 years ago, um, you knew Dirk for the title. Um, what do you think the title did to him, or for him? Well, it established his legacy um, at a whole different level. Um, and really, you know, that, that series was won with one superstar. Um, you know, Jason Terry's a great player. Jason Kidd's a great player. Marion's a great player. Tyson Chandler was a great player for us. Um, but Dirk was the only superstar. And if you look at the history of championships during that period and going forward, um, there's almost always, you know, two superstars or two sort of MVP candidates. And so uh, if you look at it in that context, um, that accomplishment was at an even higher level. And so, 
Uh, and look, that was one of that was one of the great memories, you know, seeing seeing Dirk's reaction at the end of the game, you know, leaves, leaving the floor and and having having you know an emotional experience like he'd never had, and coming back out and you know all those kinds of things. Um, so amazing, and I think the the ten year anniversary of it is coming up in what five days, five days or something like that. So it's a good time to write a story about it, but. I can, assure, I can assure you this, we're looking forward. Um, you know, we're not, uh, we're not an organization that's, that's living in the past. Um, and, you know, talking about a championship 10 years ago, you know, we've got we've to work to keep moving this thing in the correct um, direction. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to a productive summer. And once again, I mean, the fall, and September 27th or 28th, whenever media day is here, um, we'll be here before we know it. Um, in the meantime, thanks to everybody for covering us and uh, wish everybody a great summer. And if you need anything from me, just, uh, just hit me up. All right, thanks everybody, echoing Rick's sure. sentiments. Uh, been a great season, we've enjoyed working with you and we'll talk soon, I'm sure. Thanks everybody. All right, thanks coach. Okay. Thank you.